You know, no doubt families of children with special needs have so much to consider during their child's life, how to care for the child, uh, worrying about their educational needs, their social, emotional needs. But what happens when you're planning for the future of that child, when you consider what happens to my child when I'm no longer here? With us today uh, are two people from a group called Upstate Special Needs Planning. Um, they're here to talk about these questions and how they help families navigate these sometimes difficult questions. Georgia Streeter and President James Trailer are with us today to talk about um, what you do for families who have special needs children or have children who have disability. Planning for the future can be hard because the parents might say, well, you know, who is going to look after my child? How will I make sure, you know, and bring peace of mind to, to the parent that things are going to be okay? That's right, Norma. It's, um it's hard as a parent, it's overwhelming to go through the diagnosis to begin with and then have to navigate systems that are really hard to understand and ever changing. So um, as a parent myself, that's something that's important to me to be able to help other parents navigate that. Right. And I like what you said, that you're all made up of people who are the parents of or the siblings of a person with special needs. Yeah, I think it gives us um, not only a necessary but unique position to uh, sit on the same side of the table with a family because you know we've been at Wegmans when there's been a scene and people stare and we've um, you know not been able to have certain opportunities because you know growing up with our, our family members is is uh, it's just different and I think we have a nice bond because we get it and I think that's helpful for our families so there's the instant compassion for a client when they come to see you, right? Mm -hmm. What what sorts of things are they asking you about when they come in to see you? What's mm -hmm. the first sort of thing they start, you know, asking you about? Quite often it's, you know, when do I begin this planning? You know, is it too early? Is it too late? That's that's a big thing and, and we tell them um, nine times out of ten when we work with a family they always come back and say, I wish I had done this sooner. Mm -hmm. um, what sorts of so. things are they trying to ensure for the future? Well, they're trying to ensure that there is uh, a plan in place when they're not around anymore, ultimately. Um, and the different steps to doing that are understanding the benefits and services that are available to them, the legal planning, and, and honestly, the financial planning moving forward and how that individual is going to be supported. Because there's so much care that goes into and thought that goes into how to care for their child now. Mm -hmm. right. They want to make sure that that's going to continue in the future. They don't want that to fall by the wayside because they're advocates for their child. And they're asking who's going to be an advocate for my child when I'm not here anymore. That can be hard for someone to sort of face. Because uh, you're facing, you're, and this is all about, I mean, this, you're facing your own mortality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and now you're worried about your child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it used to be that... Um, you know, we used to institutionalize people with disabilities, and it's a sad chapter in not only our local but state history. And what happened out of that is there was a rapid expansion of services for people with disabilities, <coughs> such as all the wonderful agencies we have in this community. Um, what, is it, what New York State is experiencing right now is a very dramatic pullback in how we support not only people in residential settings, um, in supported employment, in day programs, and the net effect is that, is that families are going to have to come up with alternative approaches to just leaning on a nonprofit agency once their child exits the school system. Mm -hmm. And that's scary because your child doesn't come with a handbook. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is fascinating, and I know that there's a lot of parents at home watching saying, I would like to uh, perhaps get start this process, start planning for the future. Um, and you have an upcoming seminar right mm -hmm. we do um, <clears throat> the seminar is going to be focusing on when is it again? Um, it's on Georgia it's June 3rd at 6 o'clock at 500 Linden Oaks okay good and we've got about uh, a couple seconds left it's okay. going to focus on a lot of the things we just talked about it is uh, including um, a new way for families to save money for a child with a disability similar to a college savings account to get some uh, tax benefits interesting I did not know about mm -hmm. that okay mm -hmm. so that will be covered at this event yes uh, this seminar coming up and that is free the seminar is free yes, seminar is free and that's uh, covering ABLE Act excellent and ABLE accounts exactly those two right the ABLE Act right in the ABLE accounts yes thank absolutely. you so very much for joining us thank I know you we've for only having... scratched the surface but um, we hope to maybe have you as a resource and count on you as a resource for these issues in the future thank you so absolutely. much thanks thank a lot. you for having us we'll be right back after this